spring, and everywhere new leaves are beginning to grow. These are the growing leaves of a poplar tree. During the winter, they were covered tightly in buds at the ends and along the sides of the twig. With the coming of warm weather, the buds opened and the leaves began to grow. These pictures have been greatly speeded up so that you can see in a few seconds the growth that takes place through several days. Each kind of tree has its own leaf pattern. These are the young leaves of a red oak tree. The leaves of this green ash tree are quite different from the poplar or the oak. Let's look at some full-grown ash leaves. When we pick one, we find that instead of a large single blade, there are seven small ones called leaflets. You will find leaves interesting things to collect and study. You can dry the leaves between sheets of newspaper and then mount them in a scrapbook or on charts. You might collect leaves that show different shapes. No two leaves have ever been found exactly alike, not even those on the same tree. Pine trees have leaves too. Pine tree leaves are much different from the other ones you have been looking at. They are long and needle-like. There are many other kinds of leaves around us. This lawn is made up of leafy plants. These are clover leaves. Notice that each leaf has three leaflets. Blades of grass are also leaves. Grass and other lawn plants grow from stems that are close to the ground. A lawnmower cuts off only the tops of the plants. And leaves keep growing from below. Our camera shows here in a few seconds the growth of several days. Leaves are one of the three principal parts of most green plants. You can see that they are attached to a main stem, which bears roots underground. Leaves are very important. Many animals use the leaves of green plants for their food. And all our vegetables come from plants with green leaves. We eat the leaves of such plants as spinach and cabbage. Now let's experiment with some leaves to find out why they are so important to a plant. After picking them, we boil them in water for a few minutes. Boiling kills the leaves, but they are still green. Now we pour on grain alcohol. In a few minutes, the alcohol dissolves the green coloring from the dead leaves. The green coloring which we have taken from the leaves is called chlorophyll. Leaves with chlorophyll make food for the plant. Scientists are experimenting with green plants to find out why chlorophyll is so important. They have discovered that plants without chlorophyll, such as the fungi, cannot make food for themselves. They must get their food from plants with green leaves. It has also been discovered that plants make food only in the green parts of their leaves. Inside this darkened closet, the plants in the pot are yellow. Plants grown in the dark produce no chlorophyll and cannot make food. Scientists still have much to learn about chlorophyll, but they know that when the sun shines on a green leaf, food is made, and this food is sugar. The moving white blocks represent dissolved sugar going down the stem to other parts of the plant. Let's look at the cut edge of a leaf as it appears through a microscope. Carbon dioxide from the air enters through tiny holes in the leaf. Water comes up from the roots. Inside the leaf, carbon dioxide and water unite to form sugar but only if chlorophyll and light are present. The newly formed sugar goes back into the other parts of the plant. There it is used for growth, or it may be stored.
When sugar is produced faster than it is carried away, it may be changed to starch and stored for a few hours inside the leaf. An experiment will show that starch may be stored in a leaf. First, we take a leaf from a plant growing in a window. Then we pick a leaf from another plant that has been kept in the dark for several hours. As in our first experiment, the leaves have been boiled and then covered with grain alcohol to take out the chlorophyll. Now we pour a one half percent iodine solution on the leaves. Iodine makes starch turn very dark blue, almost like ink. The leaf on the left grew in sunlight. It contains much starch formed from sugar. The other leaf grew in the dark. It contains little or no starch because a plant cannot produce food without light. Let's repeat the experiment with this white and green leaf. It has been growing in the sunlight where it could make food. We boil it. And then, as before, take out the chlorophyll with alcohol. Now we pour iodine solution on the leaf. And we can see that the inky blue color of the stained starch appears only where the leaf was green. This shows that chlorophyll is necessary for the making of food. If we look at the leaf with a microscope, we can see the tiny starch grains, thousands of them. In certain plants, such as the potato, food is stored in underground parts. Sugar made in the leaves travels down the stem and in the potatoes is changed to starch. The next spring, the starch is changed back to sugar. The sugar is used to form new roots, stems, and leaves. Many green plants, such as wheat, store food in their seeds. Sugar made in the leaves is carried up to the growing seeds where it is stored as starch. When the seeds are ripe, they are filled with starch. Many animals eat seeds, and we grind certain seeds, such as these of wheat, into flour. Green leaves must have light to make sugar, and they move so that light will reach them. See how each leaf of this Boston ivy vine faces the light. Here are some young plants growing indoors with a light overhead. If we move the light to one side, the plants turn toward it. All summer, the leaves stay green, but when autumn frosts come, most of them die. The common garden plants die when their leaves are frozen. Here are dead corn plants after a hard frost. Trees and certain other plants stay alive, but the cold weather kills their leaves. Before the leaves die, they become more colorful than ever. At the base of each leaf, there forms a special layer that is easily broken. When the leaf finally drops off or blows away, we can see that where it grew, there is a layer of cork called a leaf scar. Leaf scars protect the twig from losing moisture. Here are twigs from different kinds of trees. You will find that each kind of tree or shrub has a different shaped leaf scar. And so the leaves fall. And soon the trees are bare. But in the woods and along the streets, the leaves now dead and brown crackle and rustle as the wind drives them everywhere. Some people burn leaves. This not only wastes them, but it may also be dangerous. They should be placed around shrubs and tree roots for protection during the winter, or spread out and covered with dirt to make good, rich soil. And so the leaves of summer are nearly gone, except from the evergreens, such as the pines, or the rhododendron. Evergreens keep some of their leaves the year round, 
and only the oldest ones fall off. The leaf is one of the most important parts of a plant. Leaves capture the energy of sunshine and use it to make food. All the living things in the world depend upon this food made by green plants. 